Well, welcome back to the channel. You guys are looking sharp. I've been a little slow to get content out lately, um, but today I did want to make a quick video on my 2004 F-150 FX4. This has been one of my favorite vehicles of all times, the one that I've owned the longest, so it must be my favorite, and the one that I've had the least amount of trouble with, which is funny because a couple of months ago, I made actually a pretty controversial video uh, on this truck and I released it on my other channel. So if you're not subscribed to the Nate's Trucks channel, the link is down in the description. You're gonna wanna go do that right now. And also if you're not subscribed to this channel, now would be a good opportunity to hit that big red button down below and continue to support me. The video that I filmed a couple months ago on this truck had to do with the three valve Triton motor that's in it. I got called out and I got a lot of hate in the comment section saying that I provided a lot of misinformation. I'm sorry, I'm not a certified mechanic. This video is for entertainment purposes only, so don't take my word for it, but do your own research as always, which is why linked in the description, I have a bunch of web pages from actually certified mechanics who can uh, go into more detail and explain what I try to explain in the video here. I also have several links from the car wizard because he's done several videos on these motors in uh, his short time on YouTube and he does a very good job and is a mechanic, one that's been practicing for 30 years and so I honestly do believe he knows what he's talking about. Plus I have in person talked to six or seven different shops relating to problems that I've had with this motor. So again, my videos for entertainment purposes only. Uh, I get a lot of hate from Ford guys that say, hey, we love the 5.4 liter Triton that's in these trucks. And I wanna say, yeah, the 5.4 Triton, the three valves, they're a good motor. They're a modern gasoline motor. They have a lot of power. They get good fuel economy. And uh, quite honestly, they run really well. But like all things, they have downfalls and they have problems. And some of the problems that this motor has are problems that you might not want to deal with. Or if you own one of these, they're good problems that you should understand. I'm standing in between two trucks because both of these have <laughs> the dreaded 5.4 liter three valve Triton. But this video kind of dives into all three valve Tritons, whether that's the, uh, the smaller V8, the 5.4 or the V10 engine. Wow, okay, I apologize for going on a rant there. I was actually blown away by the amount of hate or controversy that uh, that video caused and aroused. I think it had like over 117 comments on it, which at the time was like way past my subscriber count on that channel. And uh, I actually hope that this video surpasses the views and the comments on that video. I respond to all of my comments, so don't be afraid to drop a comment down below. Don't be afraid to disagree with me. Like I said, this video is for entertainment purposes only, and I'm sure some of what I am gonna say is gonna actually be wrong. But today I wanna talk about the three most common issues with the three valve Triton motor. Back in the day, it was like 1997, Ford had a two valve variant of these motors. The 5.4 Triton two valve is actually known for being a bulletproof motor. You cannot kill them. They had some trouble with the spark plugs where they'd pop them out of the heads and like ruin the head on the truck, but it wasn't like a major deal. Uh, the new variant, however, being released in 2004, had three valves instead of two, and uh, they changed quite a few other things. They tweaked some stuff and it's not as good. Um, I was surprised by the amount of comments, like I said in my last video, because it almost seems like guys that own the Ford 6.0 and the 6.4, where if you talk to a 6.0 or a 6.4 guy, that is the best motor in the world, and it's like the best diesel, it's never gonna blow up. And uh, sure, there's guys that understand those motors, and you can do a lot of work to them and make them bulletproof. You can bulletproof a 5.4 Triton as well, and uh, that makes it a very good motor. But if you own one of these, or are thinking about buying one, uh, I'm going to side with the car wizard and say you probably want to err on the side of safety and stay away from them, especially as these are getting older. But uh, it is important for you to understand these three most common issues that these engines have because, well, no matter how good you take care of them, 
eventually they will have all three of these issues. I'm gonna include a timestamp to this so you can just jump right into the video, but the first most common issue on these motors has to do with the ignition system. Like I mentioned, the two valve variant had trouble with their spark plugs. Ford included too few threads on the heads and the spark plugs and those engines would eventually spit them out right and left. And uh, that's really not good for anyone because you're down a cylinder and you're driving somewhere when it happens. So uh, Ford, to fix the issue, added a, quite a few more threads and had a new redesigned spark plug. Uh, that you know, seemed all fine and dandy because these engines no longer spit the plugs out, but instead are very, very difficult to remove the spark plugs from. So difficult, in fact, that uh, sometimes when you're removing a seized plug, it can break down at the tip and the tip can fall down into the head of the engine, which uh, is also not good to have uh, bits and pieces of spark plug floating around in the head of the motor. So. Ford actually come out with a special tool that can help you remove the broken off pieces from your engine and help you remove these spark plugs. Now, if you're not on the OE spark plugs or if you own a newer 543 valve, you're probably not gonna have to worry about that. Uh, the, the issue's been long since corrected. But if for some reason you can find a very low mileage, 2004 to like six or seven or just a three valve in general, you may have that issue and I would highly recommend that you take your engine into a professional mechanic shop, one that's experienced in working on these and has that special Ford tool to get that job done. I replaced these spark plugs at 150 some thousand miles, maybe it was like 60 some, I don't know, a very long time. And yes, it had the OEM plugs still for some reason and uh, they broke two of them when getting it out and the job cost me over $500. However, it saved me a lot more than that in the headache of me trying to do it myself. One other minor common ignition system problem that we need to talk about has to deal with the spark plug boots that come off the coil packs. I don't feel like this is a super common issue with these motors, but it's one worth mentioning and uh, it can happen on honestly any vehicle on the road. It could happen with my 2.0 over here or on your Chevy LS. And that's that over time, the boots sit down in the head, they get hot, they get cold, they get wear on them from the vibrations of the engine and they degrade over time. Because they degrade, spark can jump from the plug out onto the valve cover or onto the head and uh, will cause a misfire, which you don't want to misfire because your engine runs poorly, you get bad gas mileage, you have very poor sluggish performance. and uh, to remedy that, you need to just put a new boot on. So you'd pull that coil out, pop that boot off, put a new one on, put it back good as new if that's your issue. I have had that happen on my truck, but it was right after I had the spark plugs replaced and somebody had pulled you know, those coils out and had messed with those boots. They're probably already brittle and that just caused them to crack all the way. So. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily recommend that you keep a spark plug coil boot on hand, but if your truck is 20 years old and has a few miles on it, you may consider that. But I don't find it to be like a super common issue, but it's one worth noting. And like I said, it's not three valve specific. Now the second most common issue with these three valve trucks is one that happens here at the rear of the truck and it is worth mentioning. The fuel driver module or the little circuit board that tells your fuel pump when to turn on and off and how much fuel to provide and all of that is located here at the rear of the truck underneath the bed mounted to the steel frame of the truck which is all fine and dandy except that this module, the circuit board is encased in aluminum and uh, steel and aluminum don't mix so well and it uh, corrodes and gets holes in it. And then being underneath the truck, you get water and dirt and debris into that module, which shorts that circuit board out and ruins it. If that circuit board isn't working, then it doesn't know when you need fuel, hence turning the fuel pump off and shutting the engine off. This is a pretty common issue on these trucks. You'll probably go through one module in its lifetime. And uh, luckily Ford recognized this as a problem and they provided an updated fuel driver module that actually has a spacer 
that'll keep it pulled away from that steel frame and helping it last an awful lot longer. So if you have one of these trucks with some miles on it, I would crawl underneath here and I would check your fuel driver module out. See if it's the original, see if it has any corrosion on it or any signs of leaking at all, which if it does, it'd be a good idea to replace it. They're not all that expensive and it would help you avoid a breakdown on the side of the road. And now the third most common issue with the three valve motors is probably one that you guys could hear as I pulled my truck into the garage. And that has to do with the new variable valve timing system that Ford had on these engines. They hadn't got it quite figured out yet with the two valve, but the three valve come out, it was revolutionary. It increased performance while still having pretty good fuel economy and actually increasing the fuel economy on these motors. And like I said, I really like the 5.4. It runs well, it has good power, and it does have decent fuel economy, especially for 2004 and the time. However, the VVT system, the variable valve timing system was also the downfall of these engines, unfortunately. At some point, every three valve motor, especially prone to it as the 5.4, will have this problem in its lifetime. No matter how well you take care of this engine, it will have this problem and it will eventually leave you stranded. It all comes down to the timing chain tensioners, actually. The O-ring at the back of the tensioners blow out and you lose oil pressure. You don't get enough oil flow up there anymore and they start to fail. Coupled with that and an already underperforming oil pump for the system and a very sludge prone engine, you start to lose other things like the timing chain guides that are all plasticky, which they are in most motors, start to break apart and fall apart, and the tensioners, and it loses tension in your timing chain. As that timing chain loses tension, it gets more and more slop in it and begins to tick and clack, and if it gets really bad, it starts smacking the casing, and you can hear that audibly outside of the engine. But because there isn't enough oil flow up there, and because they're slop in the timing chain, then the cam phasers start to tick, they get sludged up, gunked up, they don't start to open and close like they should, and uh, eventually that timing chain will either break or it'll slip and your motor will get off time or losing tension, it slowly gets off time and it will all snowball down to where at some point the motor will either get completely off time and lock up or it'll get metal into your engine, which is not good. And if you let that keep going, that metal will eventually ruin and lock up your motor as well. Hopefully I was able to explain that okay enough and have it make some sense to you guys. But unfortunately, all of these motors will eventually succumb to that issue. A lot of people are saying it all comes down to maintenance and how well you maintain an engine. And yes, that's true. You can get a ton of miles out of these 5.4 liter three valves if you maintain them properly. However, they will all come down to the same issue and will eventually fail with this issue. Uh, a lot of people say, hey, it starts ticking. Don't ignore the issue. Put a new timing chain system in there. Put a new higher flow oil pump in there that completely corrects the issue and bulletproofs your motor. Um, I wanna say that yes, I do agree with that to an extent that it will help prevent this issue or help prolong the life of the engine, but I don't think it's a guaranteed or an overall fix. Especially if your truck has miles on it already, the rest of the engine's already been affected by this issue, even if you haven't been able to hear it, and redoing your timing chain system, putting in a higher flow oil pump, like I said, will only prolong the life of the engine a short amount of time. Especially if your motor gets to this point where it's already ticking, several reputable mechanic shops in the area that I've talked to about my specific issue said, um, no, we won't service one component on that truck. If you bring it into us, we will do the entire $2,800 timing belt or timing chain job on it. And uh, if you want to put a new oil pump in it, that'd be awesome as well. But we want you to realize that your truck could start ticking again right away as you drive it out of the lot or it could last up to 30,000 miles before it starts ticking again, which once it starts ticking again, the timer starts, when is this engine going to actually fail? 
So that's why I don't do it on my, my truck. It'd be over $3,000 just to service that system to coax maybe 30,000 more miles out of it. The only guaranteed fix with these three valve motors when they start failing from timing chain components is a new engine. And if you're gonna replace the engine on a 200 and some thousand mile truck, uh, you probably ought to rebuild the transmission as well. Just the engine replacement, $7,000, so I could easily sink $10,000 into this truck, which in this market makes sense, but I don't know how long it will make sense for. And uh, my truck's actually still in really good shape for 200 and some thousand miles. And I know a lot of you in the comments are gonna say, don't ignore the issue, don't just keep driving it. But if I'm planning on maybe putting a different engine in it anyways, it's not gonna hurt if I keep driving it and if I lock it up at some point. Right now I'm only using it as a work truck and so it stays pretty local. So if it were to lock up, which it could do in five miles, it could do in another 50,000 miles, then you know I wouldn't be too upset about it. But I'm also debating in the back of my mind do I leave it sit in the garage until I can get it in to do a timing, timing chain system on it and a new oil pump? I don't know. But the reason that I bring this up to you guys is so you realize that this is not only like an issue of when the truck fails at 200 and some thousand miles. I've seen it in trucks of 140,000 miles if they're not well maintained, 180,000, 200 and some thousand, 240,000 is about the max amount of miles that you can get out of one of these motors, even with good regular maintenance. Now, if you do some engine work and stuff to it, you can probably coax a little more out of it, like I said, but eventually this engine, this common issue on these trucks is going to really really hurt your pocketbook. So when you buy a 5.4 liter three valve Triton, yeah, it might be, you know, a little cheaper than a Chevy 5.3 or something like that. Honestly, I think they're better trucks, but in the end, it's gonna come back around and you're gonna end up spending more money on this truck to try to keep it uh, on the road as long as what one of those Chevy 5.3s would do. And uh, I don't really hesitate in saying that because I honestly believe it, but I know I'm gonna get some hate in the comment section below. So if you agree with me or if you don't agree with me, let me know in the comment section below. Um, I've worked around a ton of Chevy 5.3 liters and I've had a couple of these 5.4s. The 5.3 is a much better engine comparatively because it doesn't suffer from any major timing chain related issues. And in another video, I'm gonna argue why the 5.4 is better than the Chevy 5.3. So subscribe to this channel, but more importantly, jump down in the description below and subscribe to the Nate's Trucks channel because that's where that video and future videos on this is going to be. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I don't know if it ended up being as short as what I had hoped because I like to ramble on forever, but if you wanna continue supporting the channel, hit the big red button down below so that you're tuned in for upcoming and future videos. The link to my other channel is in the description. Like I said, drop a comment. I respond to all of them, even if I get some hate, which, you know, I'm a Ford guy. I love Ford trucks. I love Ford cars, but just because I love the truck doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't have problems and it doesn't mean it's not the worst motor in the entire world, which, it's probably not to that degree or extreme, but for YouTube, we make everything seem extreme. So if you like this video, if you agreed with it, or if it got you riled up, smash that thumbs up button because it does help support the channel. It keeps me out here making dumb YouTube videos for you guys, which I really actually enjoy and love. And with all of that said, get out, enjoy your automotive ownership, enjoy your 5.4, and I will catch you in the next video.